So from an early age, scribbling around, it was obvious to my parents that I had an inborn talent. And so they made lessons available to me by sending me down George Street Tech in Brisbane, where on Saturday morning, uh, artists of the caliber of uh, Roy and Betty Church ran um, uh, uh, classes for children. So we did painting and drawing and, and the things that, that children enjoy. And so my talents were fostered in that way. In high school, instead of attending the same school that my sisters and brother had attended, I was sent again to a different school that had art as part of the program with technical drawing and woodwork as well as the uh, academic subjects. So um, my art again was, was uh, promoted through high school to grade 10 and then through to grade 12. Well, right through primary school and into high school, I'd wanted, uh, always sort of thought that I'd, I'd become an architect. Uh, but for, for some unknown reason, um, I decided to go to teacher's college and do art teaching. I had two years at Kelvin Grove and the masters at Kelvin Grove taught us lots of good basic skills um, so that we could establish art in high schools when we were sent all over Queensland. And so after two years, consequently, I was sent to Billa Wheeler to start an art department and, uh, and, and teach mainly art in that town. Had two years there, had a couple of years um, had uh, 10 years in, in Bundamba High School in Brisbane and then back to North Rocky where I had 9, 10 years to finish my career before I resigned. But I always liked, always enjoyed teaching, the interaction with the kids and uh, it's a lot of fun teaching art of course. But uh, the main thing about teaching is that if you create an environment where the young people want to come to learn then they will learn when they arrive. Uh, you don't have to push them. And so it was always a joy to have an art department where students enjoyed coming to uh, do their little bit of whatever, pottery, painting, etc. I resigned from teaching in 1986, or at the end of 1986, to, to pursue my other art fields. I wanted to uh, do mainly fine art, but found that uh, it was a bit difficult, we needed to earn some money, so the commercial art field is where I went. Well, I resigned from teaching when I was 40. I felt that the time was there the, where I could start uh, doing my own thing in the art field uh, and in the fine arts, but found it necessary to, to do whatever I could in the, in the commercial art field to, to make some money as well. And so... Uh, the skills I'd learned in teaching and other places certainly came in handy in screen printing and sign writing and uh, commercial art and illustration and uh, even ended up uh, designing and building displays for places like the Biloela Silo Tourist Centre and uh, some really interesting stuff has occurred in the last 15 years where I've been asked to design and come up with ideas for interactive displays and and uh, we even put a, a, an underground coal mine in, inside a tent for display purposes at one stage. And that was very interesting. These sorts of activities uh, came to me through, uh, through Noel Hurley and Central Queensland Public Relations. And we've had a great association over the time. And, and it's allowed me to uh, learn about many different things in the commercial art field and deal with people in the outside world, away from teaching, and I've really enjoyed it, and I've had a good time and I've learnt many skills. But now again I'm looking to move away more from the commercial field and uh, look more at the fine arts and see if I can't make a living uh, and make a contribution with my talents as an artist. Um, I've always found it easy to draw and to take things in nature and, can, and put them on a, a piece of paper uh, and make them look lifelike. Um, it's just been there, it's inbred. I'm very lucky, very fortunate to have this talent. And uh, that's why I want, you know, I'm now starting to uh, use it more and more all the time. I tend generally in my compositions to zoom in rather than to stand back a long way from the subject. Even my landscapes, I like to uh, 
to be looking in at the at the bark or the tree itself rather than big big spacious fields and hills away in the distance. Most of my work to date has been paintings of uh, architecture, old Queenslanders, pubs, houses, etc. Uh, with a few, with a spattering of landscapes. But in the last few years I've, I've sort of branched out a bit. I, I wanted to try to do some larger paintings and uh, the perfect example of this is the, is the rather large uh, rocks from uh, Kangaroo Island, the remarkable rocks where I actually began to, to do a watercolour of these remarkable rocks and uh, sort of looked at it and said, well, how stupid is this? It needs to be a large painting. And that was the first oil on canvas that I organised and it ended up a couple of metres by about 1,400 millimetres uh, in size and is too big for anybody's lounge room. But it's, uh, it's there and it's, it's, it was the first of my... Uh, oils on canvas, I enjoyed doing it, it was different and, and since then I've done quite a few oil on canvas in a, in a larger format than, than the watercolours and uh, I'm really enjoying it. Each painting seems to work differently to each other. I just look at a subject, I'll see something in nature that grabs me and uh, off I go. The technique is dictated a little bit by uh, the subject matter and uh, so all my canvases you will find uh, are quite distinct from each other. Well the Vietnam War interrupted my uh, teaching career and uh, I was asked to participate by the Australian government. So after recruiting infantry corps training I was attached to the 1st Battalion Royal Australian Regiment and uh, sent to Vietnam. I had eight months there in 1968 from April through to November where I was uh, a signaller in charge of communications in Delta Company. Um, it was certainly an experience uh, of a lifetime um, and very interesting but obviously one that, uh, that has great effects on one's sensibilities. Kate and I have been married for 35 years, this coming April, and uh, we have a, a one child, Mara, who is now 27 and temporarily living in, in uh, France, in Toulouse. She presented us with a lovely uh, granddaughter 12 months ago, Ali Bell, born in France, and uh, we, we were lucky to be over there during that time. Um, Kate. It has shown over the 35 years a lot of tolerance and self-discipline in uh, looking after me and following me around. But uh, her help and her backing have been invaluable over that time. And uh, I, I guess that um, it's, uh, Kate has been one of the really important things in my life, although I may not tell her very often. snippets from the Western Front. As a result of spending six weeks working in France and in Belgium uh, in the areas where Australians served in the First War, on the Somme River and in the Ypres salient. The idea to go and work there was to really to get the vibes, to, to, to really f feel what the countryside was like. And it is truly a beautiful countryside with lovely rolling fields and wheat, towns, villages and of course the, the wonderful architecture and history that this place has. The Australians went there and I went there to follow and see where they had gone. The paintings done during the six weeks and which I've called snippets from the Western Front will be the motivation for a further exhibition a bigger one which will tell the story in a simple way of eight individuals who volunteered to go to the Great War to fight for empire and country. Six of them didn't come back. They are still there in Europe and two have returned to have families and children and grandchildren and their names continue. I want to personalise a little bit by showing photographs of these young men, having some 
of their letters, bits and pieces reproduced in text, and showing the fields where they went and fought, the beautiful countryside, the towns and villages, and transport, if I can, Queenslanders to see something of the area where they served.